Man. I was trying to figure on how, how many years it's been since I preached here. Whoops, wrong message. My Bible's full of messages. Here it is. It was the one that had four pages. And on top of all of that, I have a preaching coupon here that's worth 15 minutes. So someone gave it to me uh, not too long ago while I was preaching and said, here, Brother Mar, use this. And so I haven't redeemed it yet. I may redeem it this morning. Thank you, David, for letting me come. It's a hard act to follow when you have to follow your son. But I am I'm so blessed. I am a blessed father. I have four children, 18 grandkids. Man, and can I say I got one granddaughter that's going to have another one. So the Morrow family is growing. Leaps and bounds. Look at Anissa. She's so happy. Amen. And to think that this very, I don't know what time it is. I don't wear a watch. Does anybody know what time it is? Could you just tell me? 11, right now, right now, right now, my baby boy in Oklahoma City is taking the pulpit and fixing to preach. Hey, now, if I get excited, don't y'all worry about it. I'll be all right. I mean, he's going to take that pulpit and he's going to preach the infallible word of God to a lost and dying world. Brothers and sisters, if we ever heard the word of God, we need to hear it now. We've got a country that's in turmoil. We got families that's wrecked. We got children on the street that's homeless. And this one's blaming that one and that one's blaming this one. But I'm telling you what this nation needs is for somebody to take their place in the pulpit and preach a truth. That will set people free. Well, Lord, have mercy. For all you folks, it's Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Episcopalian, Church of Christ. If you like what I'm preaching, just do this. Y'all, you folks, it's not emotional. Give me this. I can't see anyway, so that, I feel like I'm in an interrogation room, but that's all right. Thank God I can see what I'm fixing to preach, oh, amen. Thank you for the lighting. Yeah, feel like I'm on a coon hunt. Praise God. Y'all love Jesus this morning? Let's get into the word of God. My son's preaching now, my oldest son. My next son is in Ray of Hope doing praise and worship this morning. David's pastor in Faith Church. My daughter's supposed to be here this morning. A few here, Tammy, I love you. My oldest child is a girl, and I love that girl. She don't even know how much I love her. She don't go, we can't go anywhere, not unless Tammy goes. David, Raymond, and Mark, sick of it. They, Tammy gets to go everywhere. She goes to Hawaii. She goes to the cruise. She goes everywhere. But you know what? When you get a daughter, they just got a way of reaching in there and getting a hold of your heart. You know your dad's here awake this morning. Happy Father's Day. Hello, Josh. That baby Alexis got a hold of you already, hasn't she? Yeah, wait till she looks at you and says, Dad, can I have the car keys? That'll be another story. How many's ready to get into the Word of God? I want you to stand to your feet for the, for the reading of the Word. I'm going to preach on a subject this morning titled Balanced Worship. Say it with me. Balanced Worship. Say it one more time. Balanced worship. We're going to talk about that, and I pray that this blesses you. Reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 27, only one verse. Chapter, verse 4, and this is David speaking. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and to behold his beauty, hallelujah, and to behold his, the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. 
Okay, there's three things that David is saying specifically to me. And so if he's speaking it to me, I want to speak it to you. One thing he said, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Number two, he said, I want to behold the beauty of the Lord. And number three, I want to inquire in his temple. Amen? David had to have that to maintain the balance in his life. Oh, yeah, you'll get it after a while. About 4.30 this evening, you'll be running around your house shouting. Amen. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God. It is the truth. It is a light. It is direction. It's food when I'm hungry, a drink when I'm thirsty. I thank you for the word. I pray blessings upon this people. I ask the anointing upon me. We know this word is anointing God, but we need the anointing upon me this morning. We need the anointing upon this crowd of people. I pray, God, that you'll take control of this service right now, that sick bodies will be healed, that that depressed minds will be set free, and the lost will come to know you. God, and we give you praise and we give you glory for it. And everybody in this church house said amen. You may be seated. So when I look at this verse and think how important church is in our lives, how many thanks God for faith church? Come on now. How many thanks God for this church? Now, now, now you know and I know that there is no way that we can stay in the house of God all the time. One thing, if I desire of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell. Everybody say dwell. Dwell means to live there, take up resident there. Everybody in this church house knows that we can't live or dwell in the house of God all the time. But how many here this morning can honestly say with me that I take the church home with me when I leave on Sunday morning? I take the message that the pastors preach to me on Sunday morning, I take it home with me. Because this is the house of God. This is a place where the word of God's preached. This is a place where the man of God takes his place and, and leads the sheep in the greener pastures. Oh, yeah, hey, 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 hey. Leads them into greener pastures. He leads the sheep away from the wolf. He sounds the alarm when he tells the sheep to gather in close because there's a wolf in the area. Oh, y'all come on, preach with me now. What, 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 what significance could we put up on church? It is the most important thing in your life. I believe in church. I believe that Paul or Saul of Tarsus, when he met God, God knocked him from his beast or cart, whatever the vehicle was that he was riding in, and let him know who God was. Opened his blinded eyes, filled him with the Spirit, and told him to get out there and evangelize the world. And he built seven churches of Asia. He built the seven churches of Asia. Thirteen books of the New Testament. Woo, he believed in church. God let him see the vision of how important churches were for people. David said, that's one thing I've desired. And that I'm going to seek after. If you're seeking for a church, he found one. If you're seeking for a church where God's at, you found one. Whoop, somebody shout amen to Blow somebody's hair do away a little bit. Hallelujah. Just rat the back of their hair. Amen. Are y'all glad you're in church? Hi, honey. She made it. Oh, Dan. God's good to us, isn't he? I love church, man. I take church with me everywhere I go. When I'm fishing, I'm in church. When I'm golfing, I'm almost in church. Especially when I'm golfing with my kids. I'm a referee. Hello. 
Y'all love Jesus. Does this make any sense to y'all? This is what maintained balance. The reason why some of you are not in balance with God is you've left church out of your life. How in the world can you maintain balance and keep a right direction? Where's my... You can find it. But how, how many knows that we can't maintain balance? Church out of your life, what have you got? You're a little lopsided. David said in Psalms 22, 122, verse 1, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Woo, come on, is anybody happy about that? You kids happy? I can't see you, but I know you are. Y'all happy? He's happy. We're happy because we're here this morning, the house of the Lord. I told y'all not to go to the, get a drink or go to the restroom because I'll be dumb time you get back, but. There's something about the house, man. Something about God's house. There's something about being here with you that I can't find nowhere else. There's something about the camaraderie, the fellowship, the relationship, the kinship that we have in the church. The body comes, my Lord, the body comes together. Woo! The handshake, the smile. Brother Ronnie, you're not an emotional man, but when you look down and just give me that smile, no, it touches my heart. Amen. I look across way over there and I see somebody way over there and they'll, they'll give me a little wave. Touches my, I'm drawing strength from the church. Something at the church I can't find. You go to the pib, you go to the bar, you go hang out in the disco, you go to the joints, you won't find there what your soul and your spirit needs. You'll only find it in the church where the church has gathered together. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, I feel that unction to function, man. Praise God. Something about the church, it's so important. Paul said, in Hebrews 10 and 25, he said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. How I many knows that that is very important that we do not forsake one another? When you don't show up, when you don't show up, and you don't show up, you're letting somebody down. Because I come because, I'm going to tell y'all something, I come in here a total wreck. I mean, you just don't, I, I'm dressed up, I'm smelling good and trying to look as good as the, you can just do so much for a fence, fence post. But I'm trying my best. I come here sometime, I'm in a mess. Y'all looking at me like you holy joes. That's all right, go ahead. But I come in here sometime and I'm in a mess in this. And I need somebody to give me a handshake or a hug of love. I need somebody to speak a word that'll lift me up in the curtain because I've been put down out there. I've been abused out there. I've been run over out there. Come on, somebody preach with me. You need your church. Woo. My Lord, I'm about to have a whole. If I get to shout, that's this platform too high. Can't jump off the platform and run no more. My Lord, I'll break a leg. I'm going to read you something. I asked pastor if I could read this. He said, be fine. So we already preached this. I won't do nothing to overmine or undermine my pastor. He's the boss. Him and this is the pastors of this church. Man, y'all scared? I'm going to read you something about the church and the pastors. 97% of pastors have been betrayed or falsely accused or hurt. This is the t statistics of today. Been hurt by their trusted friends. 
70% of pastors battle depression. We need you. 7,000, this is, this is mind-boggling, 7,000 churches close each year. Here's one that's just unbelievable. 1,500 pastors quit each month. Now I'm in this category. Only 10% will retire as a pastor. I'm glad to tell you I'm one of the 10. Praise God. Eighty percent of pastors, listen to this, feel discouraged. I'm talking about church. Ninety-four percent of pastors' families, listen to this, feel the pressure of the ministry. Am I preaching in this? Can you can you give me a nod, Devin? See, it's not just Dave and this, it's the entire family that's in this church. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I'm talking about. I've been there and done it, got the shirt and the scars to prove it. 94% of pastors' families feel the pressure of ministry. 78% of, uh, of uh, pastors have no close friends. This is one that's true. 90% of pastors. Spend 55 to 75 hours a week in the church. So don't let them down. Get to your church. Get behind your pastor. Buy him a suit. Buy her a dress. Take those kids out and get them some new shoes. I'm going to hear from David on this. If you appreciate them, Show you appreciate them. Action speaks louder than words. You can say I love you all day long. That don't pay my bills. I used to evangelize, preach all over the country and I depended upon that church or that pastor having me a check when I got through preaching, not saying anything this morning. But when I was out preaching, that was my income. Churches have failed ministries. My God, I feel like preaching. Hallelujah. Churches have failed the ministry. You, how many of you hold your hand up and say, I don't want Pastor David leaving this church. I don't want him to pack up his family and leave this city. Let's keep this church going. Let's keep this church moving. Let's keep this church functioning. See, when you talk about the pastor, you're talking about Nissan, and David, and Tammy, I mean uh, Tyler, and Seth. Well, hallelujah. Moving right along. Next thing he said, I don't want to have to cash in that 15 minutes. Moving right along, he said, to behold the beauty Oh, Lord, Lord, it's a beautiful thing when you see somebody in this altar. Come on, I've been coming here for a year. Not as regular as I'd like because sometimes I'm just too tired to come. Got a bad leg, bad back, bad head, bad arm, bad hands, bad teeth falling out, hair turning gray. Let's go. We go out for lunch. I'll tell you a bad, sad story. Sometimes I don't come. I tell David, I said, I, when I, you know me, I'm going to church, man. I love church. But every time I've come, you've one of the first ones down here with them people in the altars before they had prayer people coming up. I told Linda, I said, man, that's God. Kids in here bawling. Hey, man, David steps up and says, we're going to dismiss everybody, and after everybody leaves, people still coming to the altar. I like the glory. I like to behold the beauty. About to shout now. Woo! Hey, there's something about the move of God's Spirit. There's something about God that's just beautiful. 
David said, I want to live in that house, and when I get in that house, I want to see something. How many wants to go to church and enjoy everything church has offered, and in the other hand, see something? See somebody healed. See somebody saved. See somebody filled with the Holy Ghost. See somebody delivered from depression. See a family put back together. See a drunkard restored. See a person that's on drugs restored. How many is ready for restoration? <laughs> Woo! A good church produces the glory. Oh, y'all, let me tell you something. I have been invited to preach at some churches. And I'm, 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 I'm over 49. And I've been to some churches where the pastors would take you into their homes and then they'd Wife go to her bedroom, husband go to his bedroom, we'd be standing there going. Been treated bad. And when you got that treatment at home, it reflects that what goes on in church. Go back to the church at night, try to preach. It's like preaching to a field of stumps. Don't make no kind of motion. Dribble fall out. Uh, yeah. My God. A good, a good church. Good people love to go to church. People love one. People love God. A good, sound, full church. Amen. Produces the glory of God. Produces the beauty of God. People getting saved. People getting healed. Hey, does this make any sense? David said, I got to have this. I want to live in it. Woo! Mark said, hey, Dad, how was that service last Sunday at David's church? That's all, man. They had five or six in the altar. Woo, glory be to God. Mark says, oh, we had a great service. He said, three Sundays in a row, we had people, senior citizens get saved. Three Sundays back to back had senior citizens to come down and give their heart to God. Hey! Man, that's beautiful. I want to see that. Moving right along. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Yeah. My goodness, I got some notes. Well, look at this for a while. Jesus told the woman, it's a well, he said, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers She'll worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Boy, something about the church, man. We can never, I could preach two months on this subject and never get across to you the importance of your church. And then what you receive after you get to church. Going to church and getting into church, two different things. You can just go to church and go, you're left behind. You don't get to get in on nothing. It's in people that go to church and worship God and create an atmosphere for this God to move in and to behold, to behold all that beauty, to see all that glory, to see people saved. I am hungry to see people born again. I want to see that. David said, I want to go into the house of God and dwell there, and I want to go into the house of God and behold his beauty. Amen, Brother Wayne, that's good preaching. Psalms 29, verse 2, said, uh, Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I scare y'all. How many, know, how many believe we need more holiness in the church? Y'all, I ain't going to get on y'all's hair and hymns. Don't worry about that. 
I don't care if your hair is green, black, blue, purple. I don't care. Do you love God? It's not where we've been or how far we've been or how much we've said. It's what we have done as a yielded vessel. Look at someone and say, are you a yielded vessel? Is God moving in you? Because that's the only way that them people in church is going to see the glory of God. You know what? It's pretty, it, man, it's a beautiful thing to look across the church over and see a six foot, three inch tall man crying. <laughs> oh, God. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. It's beautiful to see a, a grandmother, grandchildren, or their children weeping and praying. That is absolutely beautiful. Oh, yes, I'm moving right along. You're not going to miss nothing. Just hold on. Boy, in this last one, David said, I've got a good church. I'm seeing God. Now I want to know about him. I want to inquire in his temple. I mean, those in that temple and behind that veil rested the ark, and in that ark was the manna. Woo, Aaron's rod that budded. And what? Law, the word of God. Whew, I just left some of y'all, but I'm here to tell you there's more to just shouting. There's more to just going to church. Sometime or another, you got to just settle down and say, I've got to have the word of God. And I've got to have it in my life. Hey, how many have ever read? I've read a lot of scriptures what David said. David said in 119 of Psalms, he said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not, that I might not sin against thee. Hello? To inquire in his temple is to look in that temple and find that word and put that word in your life. And that word, when you really got the word of God living and dwelling in you, when you start to do something, that word will say, thou shalt not steal. When you're sitting there on Sunday morning, you've DVR'd something on Saturday night. That Holy Spirit will push that word of God up and say, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Y'all ain't going to preach with me, but that's all right. Y'all ain't going to help me, but the Holy Ghost is. Huh? If y'all don't, the Holy Ghost going to help me and nudge me, man. Preach on, boy. Preach on, boy. Preach on, boy. Y'all sit there, y'all, hey, y'all just take church. Oh, man, they got the best coffee you ever drank down there at Faith Church. They, get, they had donuts out there. You see, sit there and eat donuts, get crumbs all over your face. Huh? Oh, it's just so good. We Just a pretty people, friendly people. But, hey, what about going on just a little bit further? You got a good church? You seeing God move? How about going a little bit further and getting that word? This part people don't want to get into. You need to get... Not just don't take it for granted what he says or she says. Huh? How about you getting some in you? Why does the pastor ever come here every morning and burp babies and change diapers? Come on, how about it's time for some of us to just flat grow up? Get some word of God in us that will bring us into maturity. Hey, when you look in Ephesians 4, he said, I put five ministries in the church for the perfecting of the saints until we all come into the unity and the perfect stature of the Son of God. What he's really talking about is maturity. Puts pastor evangelist. I don't remember what it was. I have to look in the fourth chapter to find it, but it's there in there. Let's take my word for it. Huh? The word, David said. If I hid in my heart, the word, the word. Everybody say the word. Hold your Bible up. Hold your iPhone. Hold your iPad. Whatever device you have, it's got the word of God on it. Hold it up and say, I'm going to hide this in my heart instead of hold it in my hand. I'm going to hide this in my heart instead of let it sit on the table. I'm going to hide this in my heart instead of letting it just be a, a, a piece on the table to, to make it look pretty. 
I went in home with that big old 14 pound family bottle with a beautiful rose laying across it. Gold stitching. Big old pretty wooden carved thing to hold that 14 pound Bible. Wrong place for it. Here's the place for it. Here's the place. Oh, I don't, I'm not knocking that. I got th- stuff all over my house on walls. It's scripture quotation. I'm not saying nothing bad about that. I'm saying what we need is to put the word of God in us. Thank you. Boy, I'm sweating. Man, I, you know what? I didn't know if I was going to preach this long. I'm about done, Stephanie, if y'all want to come. Praise and worship team, brothers. Y'all. I'm about done. Have y'all enjoyed this? Sister Carolyn Webb's here this morning with her sister, Kathy. And uh, Carolyn come down to show hands with me and Linda and told us how pretty we look. Commented on us and made us feel good. And then lo and behold, Kathy comes down and shakes her head and says, oh, y'all look so nice, y'all look so good. And I thought, God, I'm preaching this morning, man. People tell me y'all look good. Hmm. And then I thought about this. Sister Carolyn walked off all the years. How many hold your hand up and say she was my youth, had something to do in my youth? Look here. These are old, late, the old charter members. My daughter's raising her hand. You're here because of the word God helped her put in your life. Huh? Thank you, David, for the messages that you preached. Sunday after Sunday, man, you've poured your heart into this church. I mean, hey, you know, you talking about articulate preaching. You talking about preaching it and dotting all the I's, crossing all the T's. Boy, he he does it every Sunday. I told Linda, I said, man, I got to follow him. I do the same thing up in Martin's church. Man, it's hard to follow them kids. And the Holy Ghost just nudges said, you get up and preach what I put in your heart. Ooh, nobody, you can't, you know what, you can back up. You can back up to my house, get my furniture, everything I've got out of my house, but you'll never empty me of God that he put in my heart through the word of God. If you don't know God through the word, you haven't met God yet. If you haven't met God through his infallible word, 66 books in his library. And if you hadn't opened that library up and walked that library room and walked in and closed that door and got in them 66 books and found out who and what God is, you're missing something. You need to be like David. Thank you by the desire of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold his beauty, and to inquire in his temple. God bless you. Thank you for letting me.